Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. We shall start by paying homage to the Buddha. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sangma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sangma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sangma Sambuddhasa Today we have lesson three, Anupana Sati with Dr. Ng Yen Yen. Uh, we will start with any questions from last week. First question, uh, Dr. Ng, a simple one. When we reach the fourth step of the first tetrad and uh, calming the breath, how do we not fall into sloth and torpor? Okay. So, uh, when you do quietening the breath, you just say you are very aware and very mindful and very conscious of your mind that when you do quiet, calm down, you are fully aware of your bodily formations. So, you will just say, just one level lower only. You are not going to fall asleep. If you are already very sleepy, you don't need to calm yourself further. Just say, shh, that's all. And then this is a, this tranquilizing is an alert tranquilizing. It tranquilizes you so that you then become aware or become very mindful of the feelings. Because now we have calmed the bodily formations, the feelings will come up, the mental formations will come up. So when you calm down your bodily formations, another thing will appear. So you need to calm it down. You need to calm down the bodily formations. After you calm down the bodily formations, then you just sort of flow into the second tetra, which is about the feelings. So the bodily formations is what we're going to talk about later. So bodily formations. Bodily formations, uh, what are they? First, you must have a mental formation, like I will have an intention to touch the board. So when I have intention to touch the board, I move my hand like that. Okay? This is a formation. See my movement? This is a formation. When I want to do bodily formation of sleep, it's like this. When I do a bodily formation of wake up, it's like this. So there are bodily formations. My body takes into a certain formations of my intentions. So this is called bodily formations. And when breathing is a bodily formation, it is breathe in and out, in and out. And we are only concerned with the in and out. We are only concerned with the breathing in and the breathing out. Now, formations, sir, you also can understand by marching formations. So you have done marching before, right, left, right, left. So when we do a formations, a marching formations, we actually, our mind just go to the bodily formations. So when you do marching formations, you are disciplined. So when you do this, you have to be disciplined. You have to discipline your mind to go into just breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. It is these formations that you have to discipline yourself like you are on parade. So you are doing bodily formation. So you say, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Long, in, long, out. Long, in, long, out. So this is the formations. Short, in, short, out. Short, in, short, out. And then you just say, okay, whatever. Breathing, just experience the bodily formations. You just let go and just look at the bodily formations. Are they long or short, in, out? You just watch. Then after that, 
there's still some bodily formations which you like to like quiet down a bit more so then that's the bodily formations quiet down so when you quiet down the mental formations will come out when we are in contact with any things there are the five aggregates that appear but now we just focus on the body only so this is the bodily formations we want to focus so this is the reason why we will just calm down the body the formations and then we will see the next one which are the mental formations okay I hope this is clear formations okay yes the next thank question thank you Dr. Ng um, we don't have we don't seem to have any questions so you can start your okay. lesson 3 so we go into the second tetrate and the second tetrate is about feelings and it's a very important uh, tetrate because we have to learn to understand feelings otherwise we will be pulled by feelings here there and everywhere we will become slave to feelings now we have to know that feelings are the origin for cravings so if we feel we will have feel cravings so in the 12 do in the 12 do 12 dependent conditionality when you have this you will have that when we have so when we don't have this we don't have that because we have ignorance we have volitional formations so these volitional formations will be bodily verbal or mental formations then these formations will move our consciousness to the mind and body to the six sense spaces to the contact and this contact will give us feelings now let's just uh, ask you some questions now six sense bases so the six sense bases are made of the eye base ear base the tongue body nose mind now you think of any contact with your with any sight any sight any smell any taste any touch any no smell uh, no hey, sound huh? <laughs> so they don't belong this smell huh? sound smell thoughts so you think of a sight that you consider pleasant if you think of your sight that is pleasant okay then can you think of a sound that is pleasant can uh? then you think of a taste that is pleasant okay then think of a touch that is pleasant okay and then you think of a smell that is pleasant then of course what you are doing now is through your mind so you are having thoughts of what is pleasant so you also can think of things that are pleasant and things that are unpleasant can you think of a sight that is unpleasant people quarreling etc etc the sound of chorus but what, what type of taste that is unpleasant you think of it touch what is unpleasant touch a needle prick smell what is the smell that is uh, unpleasant okay and thoughts what upset you very much so these are unpleasant and this is from contact now I would just say that contact with breathing now we are doing mindfulness of breathing so the contact of breathing will give you rapture bodily pleasure it will give you mental pleasure this contact with just breathing 
in and breathing out would naturally give you bodily and mental pleasure. So we know that it is from contact of certain objects which will give you pleasure and contact with certain objects which will give you pain. So generally, breathing in and out will give you bodily and mental pleasure. Right? If you couldn't get the mental or bodily pleasure, means your attention to your breathing has been distracted by other hindrances, by wanting and this and that, or hating this and that, or distracted by a lot of restlessness or, or sleepiness or doubt. Or doubt whether will this breathing in and gout give me bliss? Uh, that may be a doubt. And you cannot focus because this is uh, you're having mental formations. You're supposed to be just having bodily formations before you go into the part of mental formations. Now, and then after that, we quiet down, we tranquilize the mental formation. After experience the mental pleasure, we ask you to experience the mental formations. I will explain mental formations in a Sutta Chula Vedala 44. Okay, and why did Buddha put mental formations under feelings? Isn't mental formations, thoughts, etc. Why did he put it here? Right. So we will explain it by another sutta. And after we have mental formations, you experience the mental formations just as you experience the bodily formations of breathing in and out. You then experience the mental formations. You just look and just observe mental formations. After that, it's the same thing. Tranquilize the mental formations. After you have tranquilized mental formations, it naturally flows into the third tetric, the mind. So it is all a flow from the first tetric down to the second tetric to the third tetric. It's all a flow. Right. So now we want to explain. Why did Buddha put experience mental formations here in the second tetric of feelings? Okay. Now we go to the Chula Vedala MN44. Chula Vedala, shorter series of questions and answers. If you have read it again, if you have read it before the class, it will clarify further when I explain. And if you haven't read it, you should read it after the class. Okay, this is in order to have a better understanding. Okay, so every sutta has a place and the people involved. So where is this place? It is at Rajagaha and it is between the Nan Damadina and the male lay devotee, Visaka. Now, before this, uh, to tell you a bit of tidbits about Visaka and Damadina, is that they were ex-spouses, right? And that one day, uh, Visaka came home and then he told his wife, he has understood the Dharma given by the Buddha and that now he would not want to live a life of a husband and wife. He says he is a non-returner already. The wife was, when he entered the house, the wife came down from the staircase and put up her hand to sort of like greet the husband. But the husband didn't take her hand. And then she got wondering, what, what did I do? Then the uh, husband explained as before. Then the husband says, I can give you leave now. You are free to go back to your parents' homes or you can take another husband. I leave the choice to you. And then Damadina thought about it and then she says, I will become a nun. And then she became a nun. 
and very soon she attained arahanship. And Visaka wants to test out whether she really knows. And then this is this conversation between Visaka, the mere lay devotee, and the Arahanti Dhammadina. And this is this will show you that the Dhamma Dina had understood completely. So this is also what she taught in the Sutta. He says, he asked her, personality, identity, what is it? Then Dhamma Dina says, it is the five aggregates of clinging. The five aggregates of clinging, so what are they? So is the body, the feeling, the perception, the mental formation, and the consciousness. One, two, three, four, five. This is nothing but the mind and body. So as it is everything explained by the Four Noble Truths, the Four Noble Truths, so personality, Personality, the identity, the I give us suffering. Now the origin of the this suffering, origin of this is craving. Cessation is the giving up of craving. And then the path is the noble eightfold path. With the virtue, virtue, okay, samadhi, uh, concentration and wisdom. And Panya, Mr. Ma. So, in the sense of concentration, we have the right effort. So, she says the right effort is your equipment, is your practice, is your equipment to walk on that path, to give rise to the wholesome, to maintain the wholesome, to remove the unwholesome and then to let off the unwholesome. So you must have right effort and right mindfulness, which is the four foundations of mindfulness. These four foundations of mindfulness is what we are doing, or the mindfulness of breath. Then it is the right concentration, which is the unification of the mind. So she says, she said, uh, personality, this personality, this personality has an origin, has a cessation, has a path. And why did we have this view of the personality? He says that this view of the personality is because of the aggregate, uh, A for aggregate, uh, the five aggregates. This aggregate This aggregate, any of the, all these five aggregates, each one of them is considered as self, as mind, I, okay? And that this aggregate is considered as in self. And that this self as possessing the aggregate possessing the body, the feeling, the perception, the mental formation and the consciousness and the self in the aggregate. Okay, aggregate as self, aggregate in self, self as possessing the aggregate and the self in the aggregate. Now look at this acronym very carefully. Yeah? A S A S S A uh, A S S. Now this uh, okay, it makes us this. Now this is not decretory. Yeah? I respect donkeys because they are beast of burden. Okay, yeah? where there are places that you cannot reach, these are beast of burden. The, if you google this word it will mean actually ignorant person 
We are this ignorant person. So I'm referring to this. We are this. We are this because we have a view that we have this self in self. So this is the reason why we have a view because we think we have this five aggregates has a self and that this aggregate is in the self or that the self self has this aggregates or this self is in this aggregates so they feel very integrated but this is just a view and a view is a mental formation and it's being conditioned through the samsara that we have to perform we have an eye, we have a name we are in a family, we are in society it sort of consolidates the I, me, mind so now then he talks you see with this, uh, she talked about personality, personality view. Then he, she went on to talk about formations. So she says the bodily formations, bodily, bodily formation is breathing in and breathing out. Okay, verbal formation is thought and sustained thought and then we break up in a speech like I will have to think before I speak right huh? if I don't then I'm this right now we talk about mental formation she says mental formation is perception and feelings Perception and feelings make up mental formations. We perceive we are breathing, feeling of the breathing. We think, first we feel, then we perceive, then we think. And this mental formation, the definition of mental formation here is perception and feelings. So when we have a pleasant feeling, when we contact something when we have feeling or we have aversion there is a sensation that you feel this mental formation so this mental formation actually includes this mental formation includes is actually perception and feeling perception and feelings so you have perception and feelings and we now look at it very clinically your feelings uh, as mental formations so that we don't get too caught up when we have pain or pleasure it's just a mental formations now to uh, reinforce what is mental formations you know we all have this emoticon okay huh Emoticon will tell you whether you are happy or sad. We are into feelings, okay? We are into feelings. And emotion is emotion. It is feelings, uh, it's energy emotion. So mental formations uh, will give you mental formations uh, based on feelings and perceptions. You would have feelings, uh, feelings, uh, that we have said before pleasant so we have pleasant feeling pleasant okay we have pain uh, pain and if you have needle so we have feelings pleasant pain or needle so we talk about formations bodily formations so we have bodily formations, verbal formations, mental formations. We are now doing bodily formation, the first tetrit, and then second tetrit, we are doing mental formations. So her explanation is that perception and feelings are your mental formations. You, you, uh, first you feel, when you contact, first you feel, and you perceive, and then you think. Right. 
about the contact. So now we have this explanation okay, about feelings and this is either of your mind, just now we talk about mind here, or it's about body. So it's pleasant in your mind or body, pain in your mind or body like sadness, etc. Neither. Okay, you are neither. So the Buddha then in then he asked, is the are these feelings tendency to last? So if it is for your five sense objects or your own five sense basis, so a tendency to last. Huh? when there is a tendency to last, when it is pleasant. When it is so pleasant, you want that thing, right? You want to go out, right? Some people have this, like, want to go to nightclubs or want to go to the beach, even at this time of COVID, eh? because they have this tendency to feel for the sense pleasures. So it is the tendency to last because they are thinking of having a pleasant feeling. Tendency to aversion when it is pain. If you have pain, you don't have an aversion, right? Then in ignorance, he says, is neither. Neither pleasant nor a uh, pain. Because when you have this feeling, you feel indifferent. There is no feelings. He feels that this is like uh, the person uh, who doesn't know that neither peasant nor pain is also temporary. So the person is ignorant. Now these feelings, uh, these pleasant feelings, what is pleasant and pain in pleasant feelings? When it is becomes the pleasant changes, then it becomes pain. So you must look for the change. When it is pain, when it changes, it becomes pleasant. When neither, when you are ignorant, if you are ignorant of the feelings, you are ignorant of the feelings of the neither pain or pleasure, you are ignorant, then it is painful. If you are not ignorant, then it's pleasant. When you know this, neither pleasant nor pain, you know that this is, has its characteristics and you know its characteristics, then it is pleasant. So he tells you this, and then this Bisaka asks, the ten, is it absolute that when you have pleasure, you will have lust? Is it absolute when you have pain that you have a tendency to aversion and that when you have neither pleasure nor pain, is it ignorance? Then she said, no. The exceptions to this, the exceptions to this, he says it is the first jhana. And that is why the Buddha went into Anapanasati because doing the first jhana is not of the sense pleasures. First jhana where you abandon your five hindrances. You abandon lust, you abandon aversion, you abandon uh, the restlessness, you abandon the sloth and topo and you abandon doubt. So you abandon the five hindrances when you go into the first jhana. So then he says, is all pain aversion? Oh, he says, no. He says that if you have grief for Nibbana, if you have grief for Nibbana, you would not have aversion. Although it is painful to have uh, grief for Nibbana, wanting Nibbana, he says this does not give rise to aversion. And that he says ignorance uh, is all ignorance from neither pain nor pleasure. He says no. 
It says if the person goes into the fourth jhana, where there is neither pleasure nor pain, then it is not ignorance. Okay, so these are the exceptions. Then he went on to say the counterpart. The counterpart of pleasant is pain. The counterpart of pain is pleasant. The counterpart of neither is ignorance. Okay, yeah? Ignorance. And the counterpart of ignorance is true knowledge. And the counterpart to true knowledge is deliverance. And then the counterpart of deliverance is Nibbana. Then our Chiki Visaka says, what's the counterpart of Nibbana? Then Dhammadina says, there's no counterpart to Nibbana. It ends in Nibbana. If you're not certain, you go and ask the Buddha. And then, of course, Visaka pay respects to Arahanti, Dhammadina, and then he made his way to the Buddha and told about all this that have happened. And the Buddha says, Dhammadina is wise. And I would have explained your questions as, and the answers would be similar to hers. So we can see that this shorter series of questions and answers explain very clearly that we have this personality view, we have this personality, the five aggregates, and we have this view. And all these formations, it tells this. This is important to understand. We now take breathing in and breathing out as bodily formations when we do anapanasati. And we take mental formations as perception that this is breathing in and out, and then as the feelings that arise, and the mental formations that we take it as perception and feelings. So we just continue to complete this whole thing by the last sutta here. To this last sutta, he talks, it is, it is at Jetavana, Jetavana, and it is between Venerable Sariputta and the Venerable Maha Kotita. Right. So Venerable Sariputta is foremost in wisdom and Venerable Maha Kotita is foremost in analytic knowledge. This is to complete uh, the five aggregates. So in this question, he says, Wisdom, what is wisdom? So we want wisdom out of all this, right? Wisdom is the four noble truths. So the wise and the unwise. The unwise does not know suffering, the origin, right? So when unwise people, they will go for sense pleasures, non-safe distancing, right? You know, so these unwise people have certain choices. When they make choices, you see, when they make choices, they would either have a wise or unwise decision. And this unwise or unwise, uh, it is of the four noble truth. So it's wisdom. He says that wisdom, wisdom, wisdom and consciousness they are conjoined, not disjoined. Okay, uh, not disjoined. We must know, right, when we think of contacting anything, we must know four noble truths. Will our contact give rise to suffering for ourselves, to others? So we must be sort of alert on this. And we must know that besides the Four Noble Truths, we must aware of our gratification. 
then we must aware of the danger of that contact and the escape. So to be wise, you have to apply this. You have to apply whichever you want to do. Is there a gratification? What is the gratification in wanting to do something? Is there a danger of contacting COVID and get the disease and die? And what is the escape from this dilemma? So this wise and unwise decision is about four noble truths. Right, huh? And this four noble truths is sometimes, uh, he says, it is prompted by another. And hope, uh, we hope that by reading suttas, the volitions that we have will be wise decisions. So we want to be prompted by the Buddha, prompted by the another or wise attention, wise or unwise attention depending on what you are doing. And that it has to have assisted by precepts, virtue, learning, discussion, uh, serenity means tranquility and insights. Don't you think all this require you to be conscious? So when it require you to be conscious, it is conjoined, not disjoined. So consciousness and wisdom are conjoined, not disjoined. So you have to be conscious what you are doing. You have to be conscious that you are having these precepts or have you broken the precepts. You must be conscious whether you are going to learn and you are learning and that you have discussions and that whether you have tranquility or serenity or whether you have insights. You have to be conscious of this. Such consciousness is conjoined, not disjoined. And so he says, consciousness, wisdom has to be developed. Consciousness has to be fully known. You need to know what, you need to know this consciousness, you know. You have to be fully known. Otherwise, you will descend in your mind, body and give you a whole lot of suffering. So, consciousness has to be fully known. Okay, uh, now we go to why there is this connection. What's the link? So, we have feelings. So, we have consciousness. We, this consciousness will know whether what we use consciousness, cognition, to think, to understand, to plan, etc. And we have to have consciousness to feel whether it's pain or pleasant or neither. So, there must be have feelings and we have perception. We must have consciousness. So, this consciousness conjoined, the consciousness is conjoined with feeling. You must be conscious of your contact, on your contact, eh? and that the feeling, what this contact gives rise to what feeling, and what's the perception. So, consciousness is conjoined, not disjoined from feelings and perception. Okay, now, you must be conscious of your feelings, right? This is no rocket science, okay? You must conscious what you are feeling. Is it pain or not? If you are not conscious, uh, that means you don't have. So you must be conscious that you have feelings and you have a perception of this, right? Uh? Now, from here, we have said mental formation is perception and formation. So when you feel, you perceive. And when you feel, you perceive, you think. So you have mental formation. So we have one, two, three. So we all said feeling and perception is mental formation, right? Four. So these four parts uh, of feeling, perception, mental formation and consciousness uh, 
they are conjoined, not disjoined. So that's why we have this mental formations uh, to be experienced in the second tetrate. This is the link. Okay, this is of the four aggregates. Feeling, perception, mental formation and consciousness. And the body is the five faculties. Uh, we all said eye, ear, tongue, body, nose. Right, five faculties. And this body is of five faculties. So it makes the five aggregates. Right. So of course you will read something about vital formations. Right, uh, we have vital formations. I won't want to confuse you further. You know, so there is cessation of perception and feeling. When you have cessation of perception and feeling, your formations, bodily, verbal, mental, cease. But your vital formations and heat continue. Right. And the faculties are clear. So now, we have all this information. Uh, it's just for you to understand. And now we want you to experience. What do we want you to experience now? Is that we want you to experience bodily pleasure, mentally pleasure, mental formations and quiet down. But we must do the first tetrate. And I also want you also to think of bodily formations as breathing in and breathing out. And you are now a warrior, a soldier, marching in, out, in, out, in, out. Don't divert, don't get distracted. If you do that, you will be able to experience what the Buddha says. Right? If you follow the instructions, just the bodily formations quiet down, then you will feel the pleasure in the body and the mind. Then we want you to experience mental formations and then quiet it down. That's all. So now, this is like to explain to you mental formations. That these mental formations of perceptions and feelings and consciousness are all conjoined together. Of the five aggregates, the four aggregates is what you are going to experience. Okay. We shall start now. Okay, go to your favorite spot and then cross your legs, put your back straight, right? Yeah? And then you put your mindfulness in front of you. This putting your mindfulness in front of you is important. It is in the middle path. And then you breathe in and you breathe out. Right. So just relax yourself. Just now was a ra ra ra, but now we just want to experience what the Buddha taught 2,600 years ago. And it's still true, it's timeless. And this meditation on mindfulness of breathing will help you to reduce your stress. And this is universal. It's universal and uh, the only religious thing about it is you must do it religiously every day. So now we just go into this bodily formation of breathing in and out. So we Breathe in and we breathe out. And we put our mindfulness in front of us. So you know your back is straight, your mindfulness is in front, 
and you're breathing in and breathing out. So you breathe in long and you know you breathe in long. Breathe out long and you know you breathe out long. So you carry on breathing in long and breathe out long by yourself for a few minutes. Try to stay in this bodily formation. In long. Out long. No need to strain yourself. You just have to know whether it's long or short. Just stay for just long. It's soothing, relaxing. And every breath is different.
Sometimes the step one will flow into step two. Then you'll notice that the breath, you're breathing in and you're out, becomes short. Breathing in short, you know you are breathing in short. Breathing out short, you know you are breathing out short. So you know your bodily formation of breathing in and out is short. You remain in contact with the air, the air element. Rather than thinking, just notice the air. And the shortness of the breath is just relative, shorter than before. Now we go to the third step. Mindfulness still in front of you. And just experience the bodily formation of breathing in and breathing out. You don't have to do anything, just watch.
just let the breath do as it like long or short as it like no control whatever just see the breath in and out So you get to experience the bodily formation of just breathing in and out. Remember mindfulness in front of you. Face must be upright. Just breathe in, breathe out. in and out like waves She is rising, rising and ending, rising and ending. See whether you notice the pause between the in and out.
and the pause between the out and the in. Notice how long the pause can be too and you experience that pause as well. So the third step is to experience the entire breathing in and the entire breathing out, including the pauses. So do you feel calm? You look at the breathing in and breathing out. Would you like to calm this further? You can just say calm or quiet or shh, whatever you like to tranquilize the bodily formation. Breathing in, calm, and you feel the calm. It's not lip service, breathing in calm. We experience the calmness. Breathing out. Calm.
can even use words like still, be still. Now we move to, to the second tetrit. Breathing in. Experience bodily pleasure. Breathing out, experience bodily pleasure. Mindfulness in front of you. Experiencing bodily pleasure, you may come in ways experience whatever bodily sensation you experience. You always have to go back to your breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in, bodily formation, bodily pleasure. Breathing out as bodily formation. Then you notice the bodily pleasure. So you are mindful of breathing in and breathing out and you are mindful of the contact of breathing in gives rise to feelings in the body and in the mind. So you just focus on breathing in, contact with breathing in. What is that bodily feeling? Contact with breathing out. What is that bodily feeling?
So you have to stay on the contact of breathing in and breathing out. And check out the feeling in the body. So this is experiencing, you don't have to do anything, just breathe in and out. Just experience the bodily sensation. The steps also flow into each other. So if you just allow yourself to just continue on breathing in and out, the bodily sensations get softer and softer. Then it goes naturally into the mental sensation of pleasure. You just stay on breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. What is the sensation in the mind? Is it pleasurable? Painful or neither?
So contact with breathing in and out gives you pleasure in the mind. So we go to the third step of the second tetra. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in, experience the mental formations. That means any sensations you felt, you feel in your body. Perceptions and feelings felt in the body. See as just sensations these mental formations where does it arise where does it go you have to breathe in and breathe out different shape between bodily formations and mental formations bodily formations are breathing in and breathing out so just do breathing in and breathing out and experience other sensations and the other sensations are the mental formations so you stand steady on the breathing in and breathing out the bodily formations and just watch whatever mental formations that arise and experience it First, do breathing in, experience any sensations. You can feel better at the pause. Breathe in, at the pause, feel the sensations. Breathe out. Feel the sensations. You carry on for a while experiencing mental formations. Breathe in, experience. Breathe out, experience.
Now I want you to investigate these sensations that you felt. Do you feel it at the back or do you feel it in front of you? Always maintain your breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in, experience. Breathing out, experience. Does it arise on the right side or does it arise on the left side? Remember, put your mindfulness in front of you and breathing in and out. Buddha says feelings are like winds and your world is this however tall you are, whatever tall you are, this is your world. So the winds will blow, the mental formations will blow like winds. Strong winds And you just stay with the strong winds. It will change. How does this emotions move? Where it moves? Across your face, from right to left, in front of it. Watch where it goes and where it ends. But you must maintain your mindfulness in front and your breathing in and breathing out.
someone in the class ever mention about fear? You must differentiate between bodily formations and mental formations. You always be safe when you stay in the bodily formations of breathing in and breathing out. And you can detach and look at bodily formations and look at mental formations or feel as a mental formation. Let it just pass and see how it passes from which side to which side you can go through your central whatever in this posture of meditation you are safe These are just past aggregates that were clung to and need to be released. So you watch it from a very neutral stand in a detached mode. Clear what is bodily formation. And what is mental formations and experiencing them as strong winds that blow in diverse directions So this personality view that you think fear is in you as is as you is a ignorant or a S situation. So you must free yourself. It's just processes depending on conditions. Just a past clinging Stay in the posture of mindfulness in front and breathing in in the bodily formation and breathing out. And let all mental formations float by or blow by. See them as mental formations, MF, rather than fear or pain. Just see them, just MF, mental formations. So we go to the last step of the second tetrate or the step eight 
where you breathe in and then you say calm down the mental formations breathe in calm Breathe out, calm. So you're very breathing in, you say calm, and you experience that calmness. You experience the tranquilizing, the quietening down of the mental formations, of the sensations. Breathing calm. So you are clear on bodily formations. Now you calm the mental formations. They are different. So you must always remember your stance. Your stance is mindfulness in front and breathing in and out. To observe the feelings, the mental formations.
So we come to the end of the second tetrad. Feel the bum on your seat. Feel the entire body. Slowly take your time to open your eyes. So you have questions for 15 minutes. Thank you, Dr. Ng. This one. I have a sinus issue that causes my meditation to sometimes be disrupted. I could feel one side of my nose not taking in the breath properly. Any advice? So it's okay. Just know that your it's one side of your... Um, nostril is blocked, then you can use the other side. As long as you are breathing, you know you are breathing, it's okay. It doesn't matter. You just do your breathing in and out. Thank you, Dr. Ng. Another question. Um, she managed to follow the meditation until uh, this uh, point when you go into the second tetra where you mention about mental pleasure mm. and uh, she said she reached that phase however she had bouts of sleepiness after oh. that um, so I came the, back to concentrate on the breathing again. And okay. Yeah. So they consider this uh, bout of sleepiness as a hindrance called sloth and torpor. So sloth and torpor, it happens in your, um, after the first step in the second tetrad. So if you feel sometimes, uh, uh, bodily pleasure a lot, then maybe you would actually just like fall asleep. So you must develop energy. Your energy is to focus on the breathing in and out. If you breathe in and you breathe out and your focus is on breathing in and breathing out, and you're very clear about it, this energy will act against sloth and torpor. Then you can actually, then the rapture, the rapture itself would actually wake you up. But if it doesn't, if it's sort of like rapture, and then after that you feel the, uh, the sort of it goes down, but then you did not experience the pleasure in the mind. Sometimes, because it becomes very soft, that the, the mental pleasure, then you think it is sloth and torpor. So you must be very clear when the rapture ends, whether it is pleasure. And also, you ask yourself whether you love sloth and torpor, whether you like this uh, sloth and torpor sensation. So we have to be very clear. So you also can investigate. So when you realize uh, that you are like getting sleepy, you then go back to your breathing in and out. So by going back to the breathing in and out, you actually exert yourself so you have the energy. So this is a hindrance and this is how you overcome hindrance. You apply energy and then you effort 
energy and effort. So we get it right effort. So when we have this slot interval, we have to like, oh, get out of that. So you have to exert yourself, go back to your bodily formation, your breathing in and out, exert yourself, and then if you feel your bodily rapture, it is a bodily sensation, right? And then you investigate. So all these faculties, uh, this can be uh, used to overcome sloth and tapal. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ng. Another question. My mind fleeted away a few times as my uh, breathing continues. Um, any tips to help? Can I do counting of the breath? Your mind flitted away uh, uh, while doing which? What breathing. Breath? Breathing. In and out. In so, and out, yeah. So when your mind flitted, flitted, uh, flitted and flitted, uh, same, uh, because you flirt to something else. So you went somewhere else. As long as you know you have flitted away, you must go back to your original partner and the original partner is breathing in and out and you have to be faithful to your original partner so you then go back to breathing in and out so the counting all that you can do if you have difficulty but you can just say come back it's like just training training yourself to be aware that you move out is good so that when you move out, you know how to move back. So you just need to, like I say just now, you just need to exert a bit of energy, put a little bit of effort, stay in the breathing in and out. So you are, you are a warrior marching right, left, right, left. So instead of right, left, right, left, it's in, out, in, out, in, out, and stay on the march. Otherwise, your general will whack you. So you just stay there, in, out, in, out, and see whether it, how long you can stay. As long as you can stay in, out, in, out, you can give yourself a pat on the back that you can stay in, out, in, out. You can stay on this in, out, in, out, pause. You know, this, this formation. So you have to put effort in staying in the bodily formation. So like you are in a marching formation, you are doing this much. You are now a warrior, okay, a warrior. And this, all this meditation is anti-stress, okay, it's, uh, it's good for you because you become more mindful. Now being mindful that you have your mind gone up is also mindful. So it's very good. It is uh, a progress. Then you just stay in the formation. Thank you, Dr. Ng. We have quite a number of questions still. Oh. Uh, someone said, can you give an example of how someone with chronic knee pain may be able to feel or think during the meditation? Chronic knee pain. So when you have a chronic knee pain, you must position in yourself in a way where you don't get affected by the chronic knee pain. If you have chronic knee pain, you might not want to sit cross-legged. You might want to sit on a chair. You, must, you might want to support your knee. Okay, yeah? so as you will make yourself very comfortable. So, or you actually uh, lie in bed. So if you are a person in pain, you are entitled to lie in bed, right? So now, so that you can experience the first and the second territory, so your mind knows and be able to perceive such that you can go through these eight steps. Uh, uh, with just your contact uh, is your breathing and the contact is not your chronic knee pain. Right. So we want to position yourself where you can be in just breathing in and out and not be distracted by pain. Right. So whatever, whatever, after a while, 
you can use this once you train yourself you can use this uh, to look at pain but only after you have trained yourself so the Buddha says no self mortification don't beat yourself up okay so here when you have pain don't sort of like I will endure it come high waters I will endure it so this is called unwise unwise in the sense that there is pain means there is suffering when there is suffering your body will react we have some chemicals come out right yeah so we want you to position yourself where you are pain free first you are pain free first you are comfortable then you can experience the pleasure okay so we are not sadist or masochist we want you to experience what the Buddha taught and the Buddha went through six years of self-mortification he had a lot of pain and he says that this is not the way so he remembered that if he just go on breathing in and breathing out he will feel the pleasure and this pleasure this pleasure is not of lust right huh? this pleasure you will have without the five hindrances okay thank you Dr. Ng when we experience the mental formations that is the rapture and the happiness of the earlier steps um, is that the way or are the earlier feelings still around so the mental formations are just the sensations so if they are the rapture and the pleasure then be it but you see sometimes uh, we have a lot of memories and we have a lot of clinging right sometimes when your mind is quiet when the pleasure the mind sort of soothes things up sometimes mental formations comes up because we are still a person with clinging you know, to the five aggregates so when this aggregates comes out like fear etc this comes out as mental formations so you see these mental formations as coming and going so if the mental formations are of the previous rapture and pleasure then it's good you just carry on and then it is to actually uh, know how to watch mental formations just watch them so did you see them as front or back right to left which part you know so uh, these are things where you can uh, investigate then you become more detached it will help for those people with negative mental formations such as pain such as uh, fear or any other uh, despair or whatever they have so this is a good way of watching or experiencing mental formations as winds that come and go and you see where they come from and where it went right so that this pain will become pleasant if it change so there were so there's a way whereby you can conquer pain thank you Dr. Ng if we don't feel the pity or sukha in step 5 and 6 and only feel peaceful is it okay? sure should we continue to step 7 onwards or do we keep on doing step 4? oh no need if you feel peaceful is good if you don't feel pity or sukha but you feel peaceful it's okay right huh to continue to step yes. seven but as long as you know what is mental formations because mental formations and bodily formations are different right so bodily formations you stay in your breathing in and out and your mental formations are sensations other than the bodily formations of breathing in and out so you must be able to distinguish the two what is the difference between mind and consciousness mind and consciousness so when we want to talk about mind and consciousness so we talk about six sense base 
Shall we go there? I shall clear this off. Huh? So actually context require a sense base and a sense object. Contact is a sense consciousness coming to sense base and sense object. That means we have an eye and we have the object in front of us, which is what we see. Does eye consciousness have to pull these two things together to understand it as the sight? So in the contact, you have one, two, and three to give you contact. Okay? So this mind have a mind base and a mind object. Mind, uh, mind object and a mind consciousness. Now the sense consciousness, uh, for example, the eye consciousness doesn't go to the ear consciousness. You don't see with your ear. Okay? So they have their own domain. So sense consciousness for all these five and for the mind, mind base, mind object, and mind consciousness. So to define, you must be very clear of mind consciousness and the uh, mind base and mind object. So when we are seeing our, uh, when we are looking at breath, so the mind asks you to look at breath and the breath is of the body and you are observing the body consciousness, observing the touch sensation of the air. So your mind tells your body consciousness go to the nostril. So this part of it, uh, don't entangle yourself with too much of details. You just do these four steps. When, the, when we go into mind objects, when we go to the sixth sense base, after the fourth tetrate, then we will look into exactly what is mind consciousness, right? So we just know that mind consciousness is of uh, looking at mind objects and the mind objects is the fourth tetrate. So we don't jump the gun. We just go into the second tetrate. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ng. I'll put three questions together. During, uh, someone said uh, he doesn't seem to feel, be able to feel mental formation, whether the feeling in the leg pain is a mental formation. Another person said, while experiencing the second tetrad body sensation, breathing in and out, he feels numbness in the leg. Is that a wrong bodily sensation to feel? <laughs> Yep. And the last one, the third one related to it, is it, um, are we allowed to do light stretches during meditation if we find the pain is impeding our concentration? Okay, so this uh, leg pain, numbness and light stretches, uh, so all this leg pain uh, means your contact uh, is not with your breathing, your contact is now with your leg pain of the numbness. So, uh, so this pain of the body, pain of the body, so this pain of the body is contact, okay, contact with the contact. And so this contact with the painful object gives rise to these unpleasant feelings. So you, your, this your primary object is your breath, 
but your attention is being now to the uh, pain of the leg. So similarly, your posture for the sitting, for the leg pain, you must sort of elevate it a bit, uh, have your back elevated a bit eh, and make yourself comfortable. You can sit on the chair or on the cushion, it's up to you. After a while, when you settle down to cushion, or uh, it will get you get used to the body get used and you adjust itself, and the leg pain get less. So you must be able to touch the pleasure point. If you touch the pleasure point of breathing in and out, then you want to stay in the breathing in and out, and the tension goes less to the uh, leg or the numbness. It is uh, generally there's a conditioning of your body to a particular posture. So you don't sort of like uh, push yourself. You haven't sort of put your posture in that position before. Pushing yourself will give you numbness and leg pain. So you can start off with just like 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in a certain posture, then when your body is conditioned, that it feels comfortable, it will be able to stretch itself longer. But you mustn't like push yourself, you know, to a position or posture you're not used to. So in the Noble Eightfold Path, we say here, huh, you must have right thoughts. That means you must be kind to yourself. Okay, slowly, slowly, then you uh, build your posture up. It's a conditioning. Just like yoga stretches, you just sort of stretch, and once you stretch it for a while, the body gets used to the stretches and feel comfortable. So you cannot stretch yourself uh, too long, you know? Yeah. As for light stretches, you can do walking or whatever, you find it uh, not sort of, it's very uncomfortable, you can move a bit. Yeah, but I think not, not really uh, change position too much. You can just adjust your legs a bit, right? Huh? But you don't have to go into yoga posture because we are not into uh, stretching. Huh? We are into just sitting only. You can sort of move your leg a bit to sort of relieve yourself, right? But you always must be kind to yourself. If you feel like stretching, so be it. There's no sort of, no, you cannot do that, you know. You can just do what is comfortable, that, but you still go back to your breathing in and out. And I think today maybe a long time, maybe we took a long time. Was it 45 minutes, which is maybe it's a bit long. So you can start off with just 15 minutes, then you uh, try to make up to 30 minutes. Thank you, Dr. Ng. We'll take three more questions. Uh, is feeling hungry, is that considered a feeling of uh, sensation? Yeah, hunger. Ma. Hunger is a sensation. You, uh, yeah. So I think she's ex, uh, experiencing uh, mental formations, that part. She's, so, uh, what? she's asking what's the question? Hunger, whether it's a sensation? Yes. Oh, so hunger is unpleasant, so it is a feeling, right? And try to feed yourself, you know, not overly fat, uh, but just comfortable so that you don't have to experience hunger. So the Buddha says, you must always, you know, feed yourself first. So the, the devotee who is hungry, he says, feed him first, nourish him physically. Then we are nourishing ourselves with mental food now. Thank you, Dr. Ng. Another question on mental formation. I can't seem to find or experience the mental formation stage. My mind is blank. Is one supposed to experience the feeling or perception? Feeling or what? Or perception. Oh. Because he can't feel or experience the mental formation. 
it's okay. blank. Right, right. So this uh, blankness, uh, uh, if you cannot feel anything, then uh, it's not feeling anything. So it, do you feel good or not? You know. So uh, I'm not too certain. Uh, so sometimes it's sometimes doubt on what is this. It's just a sensation. You know, it's just to feel. So we're under feeling. So we just want to experience any uh, sensations that are felt after the step three. Yeah, so this blankness is just a blankness. This is what you felt. So that's it. So you, you just uh, quieten down yourself. Because sometimes when you might just move into step nine, which is experiencing the mind. So I'm not too certain. Because at every, uh, every tetric, First, the first tetra is the bodily formation. Then the second tetra is the uh, mental formations. So when you quiet it down already, you may then experience the mind. So you must know what is it because there are the five aggregates there. So you must be able to know what it is. Sometimes you might have quiet yourself fairly quiet. Then it is the mind that you see. So it depends. So I'm not too certain. So you, ex you continue to practice and then uh, see how. Then to, the next time you practice, don't expect that blankness. You must go with the present moment experience. The present moment experience changes. Thank you, Dr. Ng. Uh, Dr. Ng, can you help to explain perception? Is it the analysis when feeling arises? Perception. Perception, uh, so the first contact. So when you contact something, you will have a feeling. Then you will have a perception. So for example, you go and buy a certain kind of food at a hawker center. This is the first time you go to that place. You see the queue there, you think all oh, the food is good. So you contact. You contact, uh, this is the first time you have this kind of food. So you have a feeling. When you eat that kind of food, then you say, nice. It's after you have contacted the food from this store, you have that feeling of pleasant. Then you put it into your memory. Your memory is that this is nice food. The memory is that this hawker sells nice food. So then when it is memory, it's a perception. Feeling and then perception. This is the first contact. Then the second contact, second time you go back to that, to that area and you go back to the store and you believe, you believe from your perception that the food will continue to be good. So this is perception. Huh? This is perception. So perception requires remembering. Memory. So the second time when you contact, uh, you will have perception first. Only when you eat, uh, you say good, 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 the food is good. Then you eat, your feeling may be reinforced, wow, this is really good food. But things may change because this is first contact and this is second contact. The cook may have changed, you know, there might be the ingredients may be changed. So your perception may not be the same. But if we continue to have a certain standard, then your perception remains that way. So that perception depends on the memory. So when we are taught young uh, that this is blue color, first time we see blue, the teacher said blue. And we put into our memory, so when we see blue, we say, I don't use the blue pen. So we use perception. So perception and feelings. So many a time we go back to the past. We never give 
another contact, a second chance because we live in the past, we live in our perceptions. So we say sir, perceptions sir, are like a mirage. We don't want to go back to the past too much. It can be false. So we can sometimes got a shoe, you know, that is green. There's a shoe perception. Some people see green and some people see pink. So the perceptions uh, are different for different people. We in the human realm are different bodies with different perceptions. So because we are of different bodies and different perception, we have a right to our perception. We cannot laugh at another's perceptions or mental formations because each one has a different experience to the contact. So I hope it answers your questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Ng. We shall end the session here. Okay. We will do sharing of merits. Let us share our merits that have been accumulated for this wholesome Dharma session with all sentient beings. Sampatam <laughs> punya sampadam Sabe deva anumodantu, Sabe sampati sidia, Eta vata cha amhehi, Sampatam punya sampatam, Sabe buta anumodantu, Sabe sampati sidia, Eta vata cha amhehi, Sampatam punya sampatam, sabe sata anumodantu, sabe sampati sidia. Let us share our merits with our departed relatives and friends. Idame nya tidam ho tu sukita hon tu nya tayo. Idame nya tidam ho tu sukita hon tu nya tayo. Idame nya tidam ho tu sukita hon tu nya tayo. Closing homage, let's pay homage to the Triple Gem. Arahan sama sambudo bhagawa. Buddham Bhagavantam Avivademi Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Dhamman Namasami Supatipano Bhagavato Sangvaka Sanho Sangam Namah